Hello, welcome to the Monday, February 5th, 2018 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Salt Lake City, Utah. Xavier came across an interesting malicious Excel spreadsheet. This particular file was interesting for really a number of reasons. In my opinion, sophisticated attacks don't necessarily use the latest and greatest exploits, but they distinguish themselves often by how much effort an attacker spends in finding just the right ruse to get people to open malicious files or to click on a malicious link. In this case, the malicious email came from Jane's360, which is a website known for information about defense and intelligent topics and markets. The email included an Excel spreadsheet claiming to contain a calendar of defense, military, and intelligence events. So the email was tailored quite well to target people interested in military and intelligence topics. The exploit itself was actually not all that remarkable in that it required the user to open the Excel document and enable ma macros. The malicious code was base64 encoded. The decode was again somewhat interesting. Instead of using more popular choices like PowerShell to decode the spreadsheet, the hacker used certutil.exe. Certutil.exe can be found on all standard Windows systems and it is usually used to manipulate certificates and digital signatures but it's also able to decode base64. I guess with all the attention that defenders start to give PowerShell, attackers are looking for other ways to accomplish tasks like decoding base64 without triggering any signatures of odd PowerShell use. And a Chinese security company, NetLab360, is tracking a botnet that is taking advantage of misconfigured Android devices. Android has an option to open port 5555 for debugging purposes. I guess uh, there are enough Android devices out there to make it worthwhile to scan for them. This new botnet is looking specifically for this port, then infects devices with a Monero crypto miner. The number of infected devices is still pretty small with about three to five thousand and according to the report highly concentrated in China and South Korea. Infected systems will also try to spread the malicious code by searching for other phones with port 5555 open. And of course, in addition to phones, well, smart TVs often also run Android and they're affected as well. And the clock is ticking for websites using TLS certificates issued by Symantec. If you remember, Symantec got caught issuing test certificates for websites like Google without any authorization from these sites. As a result, Google announced that Google Chrome will no longer trust certificate issued by Symantec. Now, Symantec actually eventually then went out of the certificate business over all of this, but starting April this year, this sort of becomes real and certificates issued by Symantec before June 2016 or after December 1st, 2017 will be considered invalid. Now, it's probably unlikely that you got a certificate from Symantec in December last year because this was after all of this uh, kind of already fell out and Symantec kind of went out of uh, the certificate business over this. But uh, there are certainly still some certificates around that were issued before June 2016 and that are still valid for a few months. Well, a uh, quick study now of the top 1 million websites to look for these certificates showed that there are about a thousand or so websites that are still using these certificates. So uh, they have until April to retrieve a new certificate. 
One of the concerns here was, of course, that there will be a lot of these websites around and that sort of uh, would kind of defeat the purpose of all of this because then users would just get flooded with warnings from Google Chrome and eventually ignore these warnings. But looks like that most websites have this already under control. So double check and make sure that you're not affected by this. And no news is good news when it comes to the Cisco Web VPN vulnerability. As I mentioned last week, this weekend there was a talk in Brussels at the Recon conference that did talk about this specific vulnerability. Now, I haven't seen any details about this talk yet, but the authors did state in a tweet late last week that they will not release any exploit code as part of their talk. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.